Please unmute until it's your turn to speak. In fact, if all of you opt for the gallery view, you will see us anchors and key speakers throughout the session. With that, please do rename yourselves to the template given by Neha in the chat. Welcome everyone. We are so glad to have you join us. We'll be starting in a couple of minutes. Please rename yourselves and adhere to the instructions given by Anushka. I just want you to add two lines. Neha, may I? Please, sir. First of all, a warm welcome to all of you who are present here today. Uh, this uh, We are celebrating Sustainable Saturday. Uh, this is a launch of our event. Uh, I, on behalf of Pratek and Nayan is mine, welcome you all to this session. And we, I can see uh, many, uh, you know, important people and people who have done good work are here. I see Nisha ma'am also here. Welcome ma'am. Uh, and uh, all of you who are present here, Anjor, Preeti, uh, all the friends, teachers, family, thank you all uh, for just coming here and giving us a chance to share our you know, thoughts. And the topic is food, which is very important. We all cannot live without it. I just want to give one state, one quote by Ransom Riggs, and then we can begin the session. Stars, two were time travelers. How many of those ancient points of light were the last echoes of suns now dead? How many had been born, but their light not yet come this far? If all the suns but are collapsed tonight, how many lifetimes would it take us to realize we were alone? I had always known the sky was full of mysteries, but not until now had I realized how full of them the earth was. Thank you. Over to the brilliant host, Neha Jain and Anushka. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for that quote. And we are so happy to have you all. Anushka, is it right time to begin? Uh, yeah, I think we have enough attendees. We can start in another minute or so. Definitely. Until then, we want to see all of your energy. Please type in the chat box how excited all of you are. Please type in the chat box from the states you are, how excited you are. We would like to listen to you. Please write in the chat box. Amazing. We have people from all over India and outside. Mumbai, Bangalore, Kashmir, Pune. That's so amazing. So let us begin. Anushka, over to you. Was, was your childhood memorable? What do you think made it the way it was? Was it just your exposure to the lush green fields or the play parks or maybe the small happiness that you got from dancing in the rain? Well, believe me, all of us present here today miss those days where we used to run around with our friends or maybe have a life without the compulsion of wearing masks. But the question here is, can you imagine the childhood that we had a few years back to be the same as any other child born, let's say after 20 years? Over here, we're talking about the same playful nature, the same enjoyment and the same environment. Oh, what an intriguing question, Anushka. I'm sure the answer eagerly awaits all of us as we walk through today's session. Surely, Neha. And with that, we welcome all of you on behalf of Pratyek Nine is Mine to the launch of Sustainable Saturdays. With that, we would also like to extend a warm welcome to our collaborators of the event, that is, our friends from Edmund Rice International, Geneva. Now to start off, I think you all should get um, a brief understanding of who exactly your hosts are. With that, I would want to introduce my co-host here, which is Neha. Um, Neha is a 17-year-old budding social activist. She is a civil service aspirant. Currently, she is pursuing her BA Applied Psychology Honours. 
Um, she has actively been working with many, many NGOs for quite some time now. And we're talking about causes like the child rights, healthcare, um, environmental conservation. And of course, the reason she's here is because she's been an active volunteer at Pratyek. Now, some things that she's done for us here at Pratyek is um, last year when there was when we were still in COVID, she provided COVID relief by initiating vaccine drives. She raised funds for vulnerable children. She participated in campaigns such as the Pratyek's um, Children's Parliament, the UNICEF Mentorship Program. And most importantly, one such summit that took place last year in October, in which she played a core role, which was the Global Earth Summit. Basically, what I'm trying to say over here is that Neha has left no stone unturned when it comes to contributing to society. And with that, we would want to welcome um, my co-host, Neha. Thank you so much for that introduction, Anushka. And let me uh, tell all of you that Anushka herself is a student studying in Shivnada School, Gurgaon, and an earth proactivist who has been actively working with Pratyek for the past year. Being an important member of executing and successfully carrying out of the Earth Summit, she is also a ma medical aspirant looking forward to provide service to the community in the best way she can. She has been also associated with many NGOs and provide a better and sustainable life to those who are not economically sound. The unique thing about her is that experiencing a journey from US to India, she brings in the flavor of diverse cross-cultural experiences in the program. Being a recipient of appreciation certificates from Howard and IAYP, as well as Olympiads, she is proud to be a part of Prati, and we are proud to have you here, Anishka. Thank you so much, Neha, for that warm welcome. I think now it's time to introduce the Sustainable Saturdays program and exactly why we are here today. Neha, would you like to take the stage? Surely, Anushka. It will be my pleasure to tell all of you about Sustainable Saturdays. We are launching this program today and it is an initiative spread over 12 months. We want to introduce children, parents, teachers to the newfound ideas of how to make the world more sustainable for future generations. Every month we will allot one Saturday where we will introduce new topics to enlighten all of you to the ways in which you can contribute to your own small and unique way. So Anushka, having introduced why we are all gathered here today, let me ask you a question. What does sustainability of our planet mean to you? Sustainability. Firstly, I think it's about people and their needs. Many people have a misconception that it's just about technology or the environment or quote unquote being green. Now, the thing is, if we look at it with an environmental lens, we will find that sustainability is also about managing and protecting the Earth's resources. With resources, we talk about ecosystems, the climate, the atmosphere. And the question why we are doing this is so that the current generations and the future generations will have the resources um, and the skills that they need to survive in the future. Now, we would like to know what words you would associate with sustainability. Let's all pull in our thoughts on a menti link that we will be sharing in the chat. Neha, could you also share your screen? So a link is being circulated in the chat box. Please go to that link and uh, fill in the words which come to your mind related to sustainability, food, environment. We would love to see all of your creative words. I would like to add one line. Whatever you are in Hindi, go to the Hindi channel. There is Sayyam Bhaiya. They are doing Hindi in Hindi. और यहां पर आपको इस लिंक पे क्लियर करना है और सस्टेनेबिलिटी पर्यावरण क्लाइमेट चेंज से जो भी समझ आ रहा है आपको उसके बारे में बस वर्ड लिख दीजिए फिर हम स्क्रीन पे देखेंगे क्या कौन कितने आ, क्या सोच पा रहा है थैंक यू सो प्लीज स्विच टू हिंदी इंटरप्रिटेशन 
those who you are comfortable in hindi thank you thank you sir for adding that jinko bhi hindi ki zarurat hai please interpretation button niche symbol diya hua hai us pe click karke aap ja sakte hain wahan pe sayam bhaiya aapke liye hindi mein translate kar renge aur please jaldi se is link pe jaye aur wow hum log already words dekh pa rahe hain didi kahan se jana hai चैट बॉक्स पे लिंक दिया हुआ है आप तीन वर्ड्स डाल सकते हैं आपको दिख रहे हैं यहाँ पे काफी सारे वर्ड्स हमारे पास आ भी चुके हैं वाओ ऑसम नेचर दिस इज सो ब्यूटिफुल वाओ सर्वाइवल सिक्योरिटी इको सिस्टम फेसिलिटी इज फॉर चिल्ड्रन beauty of human anushka isn't that incredible it's great to see all of these children here sharing their thoughts everyone please do click on the link in the chat if you also want to share um your words that you associate with it aur aap sabhi hindi mein bhi type kar sakte hain words jo bhi aapke dimag mein aata hai aap usse type kar sakte hain hindi mein bhi aur english mein bhi it's beautiful great so we have got a very diverse and amazing collage and with this i can see that hame already bahut kuch pata hai and i'm sure hum bahut kuch seekhne bhi wale hain we we'll learn a lot in this session okay so we've got quite a few words from all of you and we're so overwhelmed with the responses that we've got um now keeping our topic in mind which is food um neha how do you think we can achieve achieve sustainability with food so that's an interesting uh, correlation and firstly um i'll agree with your point on sustainability but when we talk about specifically about sustainable food we mean food that is safe and most importantly healthy the type of food that is produced without hazardous pesticides chemicals non essential antibiotics or growth promotion supplements basically unadulterated food along with that nutrition is also playing an increasing role in defining sustainable foods there is a growing movement towards plant based foods these foods tend to have a greater emphasis on whole foods and fewer processed ingredients Well said Neha I think you've captured the whole essence of why we here today Now we've all talked about why sustainability is important but let's also um give our audience a little bit of a background um and our journey so far um for sustainable Saturdays Absolutely and I'm so excited about that because I want to tell all of you that this is not only a program this has been a process so as we give launch to this uh, sustainable saturdays it is imperative that you should know that this initiative is a crucial stepping stone towards a youth led global earth movement demanding and enforcing climate action that has been constantly evolving and being implemented structurally through the following levels Firstly it began with an earth summit that was a 3 day virtual conference on climate change bringing together people from 50 plus countries to speak about climate change and action it was culminated in the creation of earth charter that was brought forward during the cop 26 at glasgow further the summit was followed by the uh, challenge period that was 99 days period where young people engaged in taking action executing their commitments 
So we at Pratyek Nine is Mine also continue to encourage many young people like you all to execute the commitments and raise their voices at several platforms. forms including earth strike unicef mentorship program no cop out event edx and more however as we now launch the sustainable saturdays let me announce that the challenge is on we really look forward to the enthusiastic participation of all you young climate pro activists and individuals seeking change for earth so we are circulating the link in the chat box please uh, copy that and uh, do or uh, remember to make nominations to the same all the very best great so keeping that in mind the link is already been posted in the chat um do click on it and register up um but with that i think um we should also take up the example of the recent covid pandemic um now not everyone has happy memories attached to the covid 19 that occurred last year um but we also have to remember that we are still adapting um to live with all of these uncertainties and i think we should take a minute rethink and then bounce back to save humanity i want you all to carefully hear this song that will help raise our spirits during these tough times neha just share your screen with the song Uh, while the while Nia is sharing the screen, I want to just uh, uh, मैं दोबारा से बोलना चाहूंगा जो भी बच्चे हिंदी में कंफर्टेबल है यहाँ पर कई बच्चे दिल्ली से आ रहे हैं कई बच्चे uh, अलग अलग शहरों से आ रहे हैं कृपया करके हिंदी चैनल को चूज करें आपको हिंदी में uh, सुनने को मिलेगा संयम भैया है वहां पर बोल रहे हैं थैंक यू सो आई वु ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू आस्क इफ देर गोइंग टू बी लाइव परफॉर्मेंस uh yes yes we have yeah. laksh and uh let me just check uh, sachi and laksh you are here can you switch on your video yes sir yes sir welcome welcome you both good to see you again thank you so thank much you, sir. Sir. so this is yeah we are really so, excited for your performance oh, so the stage you. is yours okay thank you so much good evening Good evening, everyone. My name is Lakshya Thapa, and I am from Darjeeling. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sakshi, and I am from Darjeeling. So today we are going to present a climate anthem, which is based on climate. And this song was prepared in last year, in December, when we are to present this anthem to the Honorable Vice President of India in the Climate Parliament. We also want to thank uh, Manjul Mistik and team for this uh, opportunity. Opportunity. to present our anthem so here uh, here we are going to start our song so hope you guys like it <coughs> ek badnaav ban jaao ek badnaav ban jaao जल पर के भीतर जाओ बादलों को हाथ लगाओ पंछियों का राग बन जाओ मैं भी एक बदलाव बन जाओ मैं भी एक बदलाव बन जाओ हर तरह है दुआ है नदिया भी प्यासी किंतु ऑक्सीजन भी कम हुआ है जंगल भी जल रहे बेमोत ने दोष मर रहा तो कैसे मिल को बचाओ मैं भी एक बदलाव बन जाऊ मैं भी एक बदलाव बन जाऊ बारिश का पानी बचाओ प्लास्टिक को दूर भगाओ बारिश का पानी बचाओ प्लास्टिक को दूर भगाओ पेड़ ना काटो और पेड़ लगाओ तो 
चलो इन सबको जीवन का हिस्सा बनाए चलो इन सबको जीवन का हिस्सा बनाए एक बदलाव बन जाए एक बदलाव बन जाओ एक बदलाव बन जाओ एक बदलाव बन जाओ Thank you. Thank you so much, Shakshi and Lakshya. That was a great song. I'm sure everyone's spirits have risen. Um, what a beautiful voice. Um, now, I think that we're all back to the meeting. Let's let's pass the stage on to our guest expert himself. But before that, let's do a short introduction as to who he is and what his background is. Neha, would you like to do the introduction? Definitely. And we would now like to welcome our guest expert, Mr. Anjor Bhaskar. Anjor is a professional, uh, is a professor at the Azim Premji University and a passionate speaker as well. Over the course of many years, he has worked in the field of development and sustainability. He works at the crossroads of research and action for sustainable development, focusing on policies that impact the most vulnerable, including social protection policies and environmental management. We would like to extend a warm welcome to you along with your wife, Preeti Ma'am. Sir, please, the, the floor is all yours. Hi everyone, uh, this, it's great to be here with all of you. Um, I, I, first of all, I just want to, want to thank Pratek for inviting me here and I, I've been engaging with Pratek over the last few days and it's been wonderful. I think it's a great organization and these, peop these uh, people are doing some amazing work, very passionate about what they do and doing it with all sincerity. So now let's start talking about food. And uh, let me share my screen first. Yeah. Okay, can you see the screen? Yeah. Let me make it full screen. Okay. So we're talking about food. Everyone likes food. Who doesn't like food around here? Raise your hands. I want to see raised hands of someone who doesn't like food or doesn't want food. Okay, I don't see any raised hand. That means everyone likes food. Okay. Uh, the question that we're going to talk about is how do we make it sustainable? Okay, so should I talk mostly in English or Hindi? Quick question to the organizers. So you can keep it bilingual and uh, also uh, interpretation is also happening. So as for your comfort. With English because the interpretation okay. is available for Hindi. And I can, okay. Okay, fine, thanks. So we're going to talk about how to make food sustainable. Now let's talk about why we want to talk about food sustainably. We all want food, right? We all want food that's tasty. We want food that's nutritious. We may not want it, but our parents want us to eat food that is also nutritious and healthy. We may be happy. Just show the हम चिप्स चॉकलेट और चाट खा के खुश हो सकते हैं पर वी वांट इनफ ऑफ इट सो दैट वी कैन फिल आवर स्टमक ऑल द टाइम एंड वी नेवर हैव टू गो हंग्री सो एक्चुअली वी वांट मोर देन इनफ सो दैट वी आर श्योर दैट वी नेवर हैव लेस फूड देन वी नीड बेसिकली व्हाट दिस मींस इज दैट वी ऑल वांट टू बी फूड सिक्योर ऑल द टाइम so let's talk about what it takes to become food secure okay uh, what do we need to become food secure that means what do we need to ensure that everyone has enough food at all times nobody goes hungry okay? the first thing that we need to do is ensure that there is enough production of food that means that 
we need to make sure that there is enough availability of food. Okay. Second, we need to make sure that this food reaches people. Okay. So that means that people should have access to that food. Okay. It's not okay that one country produces all the food in the world and the re remaining 200 countries are going hungry. Right? Maybe one country is producing more food than the world needs, but if it's not reaching other countries, then that's not solving the problem, right? Or maybe one part of India is producing uh, a lot of food, more food than uh, all of India can eat, but it's not reaching the other part of India. That means half of India is going to go hungry, right? So it has to reach people who need food. And thirdly, it needs to be affordable, which means that once it's reached, I need to be able to buy it. So even if there's food in the shop next to my house, if I'm not able to buy that food, it's useless for me, right? I can't eat it. So there needs to be adequate availability of food. It needs to be accessible by everyone and, it's and it needs to be affordable for everyone, okay? So let's look at food production. Are we producing enough food? And here's a question for everybody. Do you think we are producing enough food in the world? Or do you think we're producing less than what we need? Quickly, anyone wants to answer this? Are we producing enough food or are we producing less than what we need? Neha, you want to answer? Or anyone? Uh, you can unmute or type in the chat box. Uh, Sunil, what do you more. think? I think we're producing enough. I, I, I want to yes, hear from the kids. Enough. Okay. Yes, you're producing enough. Okay. Someone else wants to say, are we producing enough? I think there are a lot of um yeah in the chat as well. A lot of people are saying yes. Yes. Okay. So Is there anyone who oh, on oh, in the okay, chat? Okay. And I feel that uh, yes, we might be producing enough food, but as you talked about nutrition and the quality of food, that is degrading, I believe. Okay. Okay. So some a lot of people are saying less food production, lack of food, and some people are saying there is enough food. So there is some doubt whether we are producing enough food or not, right? Some people are saying there's less food, and some people are saying that there is enough food in the world. Okay. Now let's look at the data. What is the data saying? Do we have enough food in the world to go around for everyone to eat or not? Okay. So this is a graph that shows how much food production, crop production has increased in the last 18 years between 2000 and 2018. Okay. So you can see uh, in 2000, uh, the amount of food we were producing in 2018 we're producing almost 50% more, okay? So we're producing, in 2018, we were producing about 9.2 billion tons of crop, okay? Um, what that means is by now we're in 2022, right? So we're producing almost 10 billion tons of food. Okay? What is our population? What is the population of the world? Any clue? Anyone wants to write in chat? Or answer, what's the population of the world? Uh, 8 billion. Not quite there. We're probably somewhere approaching uh, 7 billion, okay? So 7 billion people, about 10 billion tons of food being produced in the world. What does that mean? How much food per person? That's about a little around 1.5 tons per person per annum, okay? So that's about 1,500 kgs of food for you in a year. Do you think you can eat that much? No. Yeah. Um, that's more than, that's a little more, I'd say a lot more than what you need. So that's more than what people can consume. Let's look at, uh, Let's look at trends again. And what you can see here in this graph is that for all types of food, production has increased in the last 20 years. Whether it's sugarcane, maize, rice, wheat, potatoes, soybean, anything you look at, the production has 
most of the common crops that we eat, the production has increased quite a bit. Okay. Uh, these are oil, uh, oil production data. So oil production has also increased dramatically in the last 20 years. And here you look at different kinds of crops which are produced and how they have increased. And you look at uh, meat production, for instance. The primary most popular meat and most, uh, most produced meat is that of pig. Uh, if you talk about vegetable oils, uh, the production increased a lot, but that production was driven largely by increase in production of palm oil. If you look at uh, meat, about in 2018, 342 million tons of meat was produced. Okay, that's about, again, 50% more than the amount of meat that was produced in 2000. Okay, so in about 20 years, we've increased meat production by 50%. Now, food is not just about food that we produce and eat. It's also about people who are engaged in that production of food. So now let's look at how many people are actually engaged in production of food. And can you believe it? While we've increased food production by 50%, what does an increase of 50% mean? It means that if we were producing 100 kg earlier, now we're producing 150 kg now. Okay, so now we've increased food production by uh, 50%, but at the same time, the number of people who are engaged in agriculture has gone down significantly in the last 20 years. So in 2000, around 1,050 million people were engaged in food production. Now it's only about 800 and 84 million, and that may have gone down further in 2022, okay? So the number of people engaged in food production is reducing. What's happening to hunger? That's the question we started off with. Are we producing enough food to feed everyone? The point is that everyone should have enough food to eat, right? So we've increased food production by 50%. The number of people engaged in agriculture has declined. Does that mean that everybody is getting enough food? Clearly, no, right? Uh, and this is something you would all know, you would all have experienced that a lot of people in the world are going hungry still. Okay? According to the Food and Agricultural Organization, about 690 million people were going hungry in 2019. And this number actually increased. Can you believe it? That the number of people going hungry is actually increasing. So while uh, it, so actually between 2014 and 2019, the number of people who have to sleep hungry has increased by about 60 million. So while food production has increased by 50% in 20 years, the number of people going hungry is also increasing. And this is particularly since 2014 globally. Okay? And this would actually have increased much more in the last two years because of the pandemic. Okay? What's happening on the other side? Hunger is increasing, food production is increasing, hunger is increasing, but on the other hand, people are also becoming more and more obese. Okay? So obesity is also increasing. What is obesity? Obesity means people actually eating more than they need to be eating. And people are not being able to digest the food that they're eating and therefore weight is growing more than the optimal. So people are weighing more than they should. So almost 30% of adults in North America, Europe and Oceania are obese. Okay, and obesity is a problem that's everywhere. It's there in developing countries as well as developed countries. It's there in poor countries and in rich countries. Okay. Um, let's talk about the sustainable development goals. Okay. Have you heard about sustainable development goals? How many of you have heard about these goals? Raise your hands. 
Yes, I have. Yes, I have heard. Awesome. They, they are they are going to achieve it by twenty thirty. Okay, great. So we're going to talk about one particular sustainable development goal here. Okay, there are many sustainable development goals. We're going to talk about one of these goals related to food security. Okay, um, the countries of the world got together and decided that. we have to end hunger by 2030 what year is it right now 2022 right so how many years remaining eight years remaining by 2030 and they had decided in 20, around 20, 2015 so seven years ago they decided that by 2030 we have to end hunger in the world that means nobody should be going hungry uh that also means that there should be no malnutrition okay that means nobody sh there should be no children uh, who are stunted who are wasted stunted children means they are not of proper height which is a sign that they are not growing properly because of improper nutrition or wasted wasted means they don't have enough weight which is again a sign that they are not eating properly they are not getting enough food okay or they are falling ill too often okay there are other goals uh, within the sustainable development goal too uh, related to increasing the incomes of farmers making uh, making farming a more secure occupation making food production and food systems more sustainable maintaining genetic genetic diversity of seeds and plants and increasing investment uh, in agriculture okay but the most important thing was ending hunger and malnutrition by 2030 are we going to achieve that goal what do you think how many of you think we are going to achieve the goal of ending hunger by 2030 yes no yes no quickly write on chat i don't think no 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 i don't think oh my god most of you don't think we are going to achieve that goal somebody is not sure somebody says hopefully <laughs> okay no <laughs> so your suspicions are correct we are not going to achieve this goal of ending hunger by 2030 most probably unless we take very drastic actions which doesn't seem like we are taking so um the prevalence of under undernourishment has actually increased in the last 5 uh, years and it would have increased drastically in the last 2 years because of the pandemic okay so we're definitely not on track uh, most of the people who are hungry are in asia and particularly in south asia okay um 130 Five million people. So, so there are about uh, six ninety one million people in two thousand nineteen. There were about six hundred and ninety pe million people who were hungry. One hundred and thirty five million of these were acutely hungry. They were extremely hungry, and now that number could have doubled or more than doubled because of the COVID COVID pandemic. Okay. So we're definitely not on track to achieving SDG two. but while we're increasing so this is weird right we're increasing agricultural productivity a lot of people are becoming obese but at the same time the number of people engaged in agriculture is reducing and the number of people who are hungry is also increasing this is very weird okay at the same time what's happening is that the side effects of agriculture are increasing and you can see these side effects drastically how many of you are in delhi how many of you are from delhi can you just say me yeah you can write me 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 if you're from delhi i am me sir you are okay okay quite a few of you from are from delhi how's the uh, how's the environment here how's the pollution Raise your hands if you think there's no pollution in Delhi. Very bad pollution, right? Okay. And did you experience the pollution, particularly in November, around the time of Diwali? 
how is the pollution level around november december that's the peak time of pollution in delhi right and why do you think you know that's the time that pollution gets really bad and delhi is in, in the news if you watch the news or if you read the newspapers then you know that delhi is in the news for all the bad reason because of its pollution levels why is the pollution so high in that period one of the main reasons that pollution is very high in this period is because farmers all around delhi in punjab in haryana in uttar pradesh in madhya pradesh are burning crop residue that means they have harvested their crop their paddy or the wheat and what is the stock that is remaining they are burning it and that smoke from that from the burning of crop is what is coming into delhi and causes most of the pollution in those months so agriculture clearly has a lot of side effects okay. uh, and those are the side effects we are now going to talk about the costs of agriculture uh, what we are going to talk about okay big question now does agriculture cause climate change or is it beneficial for the climate think about it green fields there's so much greenery all around uh you know agriculture means green fields so agriculture must be good for the climate right so type your answer if your answer is a it causes climate change that means it's bad for the environment then type a or if you think it's good for the environment you know growing plants has to be good for the environment right then write b in your put your answer in chat okay if you think it's good agriculture is good for the climate then b if you think it's bad for the climate a both okay some people are writing a some people b a b b of course okay it is good okay a okay so most people think agriculture is good for the climate right it's good for the environment of course you know green fields lots of plants and you like going to the village right village the village we like the environment in the village because it's so green lush green and it's because of all those crops so obviously agriculture has to be good for the climate right yes okay the answer is it's bad for the climate okay it's not good for the climate agriculture actually causes harm to the climate now some more question what do you think is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in the world i'll tell you ruksar we'll get to that okay i'll tell you how it's bad for the climate but what do you think is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in the world now type your answer a b a is for transport b is for housing c is for infrastructure so you have to write what is the largest source of emissions and what is the second largest source of emissions okay so you can write a uh, if you think largest source is transport and the second largest in, in, is infrastructure then write a comma c if you think the largest source is energy and the second largest is transport then you can write b comma um sorry d comma a okay so largest and second largest so largest first and then second largest second okay okay some people think it's a transport all those cars right and planes and the pollution from those cars and planes a comma e d comma c e okay some of you are saying e now agriculture is a source of pollution and big pollution d e okay we'll come to the answer now yes somebody is saying something anushka you saying something no no it's fine you can carry on all right sure okay okay now what proportion one question last question what proportion of global greenhouse gases do you think come from agriculture 
Now I'll write your answer. A 7%, B 13%, C 21%, D 32%, and E 47%. A, 21%, B, 21%, C, don't Google anyone, okay? <laughs> you cannot Google. All right, 13%, D, 32%, okay, 21%. The answer is B, 13%, okay? One more, sorry. Which country contributes most to global greenhouse gas emissions? I'll give you the answer, it's China. Okay, now let's cut to the answers. So first question, how much, how many green, how much greenhouse gas emission takes place from agriculture? Okay. And the answer is about 6 billion tons annually. 13% okay. of the total global greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture. And that's a huge amount. And the answer to the earlier question Agriculture is the second largest emitter of global greenhouse gases. The first largest is the energy sector, that is the food production sector. And that is the energy production sector where we're getting this electricity from. So basically electricity production. Okay. Um, where do these, uh, why? So somebody asked why, uh, how is agriculture actually polluting? and they were confused. How is it that agriculture can be actually bad for the environment? Uh, there are many reasons. We'll come to those. But two of the biggest reasons are cattle. People who rear cattle, and particularly those who rear cattle for beef, uh, cattle produces methane. Okay? Cattle belt, there's, a, there's a phenomenon called cattle belching, which produces methane gas. Okay? And that is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. And the second largest source is the chemicals that we use, the fertilizers, the pesticides that are added to soils, and they release nitrous oxides uh, in the environment. So top 10 countries which cause uh, agricultural, in terms of agricultural greenhouse gas emissions, firstly, China, then Brazil, then United States, and India is the fourth largest producer of agricultural greenhouse gases. Okay, now where, where do all these uh, greenhouse gases come from? We'll talk about that. We'll, we'll also talk about other costs and other sort of problems with agriculture today. What are the costs of this food production? So we talked about cattle belching, that is the emissions from livestock, we also talked about chemicals used in agricultural production. A lot of water is used in agriculture, okay? A lot of water. Um, emissions in transportation, food has to be transported, agricultural goods have to be transported from one place to another. So there's a lot of transportation cost and emissions uh, from that transportation. Agriculture also leads to a lot of cruelty to animals. Okay? Uh, there's a lot of crop wastage also in agriculture. Uh, crops are produced, but they don't reach us. There's a lot of food wastage. That is food that is produced is also wasted. Uh, there are machines used in agricultural production, which also lead to a lot of emissions. Uh, we spoke about crop residue burning that also leads to a lot of emissions. Uh, and then packaging, uh, food is packaged for transport and sale. That also leads to pollution. And finally, we'll also talk a little bit about farm, the vulnerability of farmers. And particularly, we've heard about how many of you have... Okay, can you meet, mute that person? Uh, just a second, Anjul. Uh, can okay. someone mute Anjul? Okay. So, uh, how many of you have heard of farmer suicides in India? Yeah. So... Um, so farmer suicides happens because is a sign that farmers in India are very vulnerable. Okay. So we'll talk about that also. Now let's talk about chemical use in agriculture. As you can see here, chemical use in agriculture is, uh, this is a graph that shows chemical use, projected chemical use from 2018 to 2025. And this has increased and is 
set to increase drastically in the next uh, in the coming years as well okay so fertilizers pesticides and their use is not coming down it's only projected to increase uh, this is the use by uh, by volume in terms of million metric tons so in 2019 it was 289 million metric tons and it's going to go up to 400 million me metric tons globally uh, do we need these uh, chemicals in agriculture do we need these harmful pesticides and uh, fertilizers let's talk about pesticides okay it's estimated that about 40 percent of annual food production is lost because of pest infestation so clearly pests are a problem and we need to deal with that and therefore one of the solutions that has been promoted most widely is the use of chemical pesticides uh, and we use how much pesticide do we use we use approximately 3.5 million tons of pesticide globally okay. um, actually um, and there are about 6400 types of pesticides okay 6400 different types of pesticides and 15% of these are supposed to be highly hazardous pesticides. What do we mean by highly hazardous? That means they're very, very poisonous pesticides, very harmful for human health, but they're still being used and they used mostly in developing poor countries like India. Which are the top pesticide consuming countries of the world? China is at the top then US, then Argentina, and India is at number 10. Uh, this gives us the amount of pesticide use annually. So India uses about 56,000 tons of pesticide in a year. Okay. So India is the, in Asia, can you believe it? So India doesn't use too much pesticide, but India is actually the largest producer of pesticides in Asia, in all of Asia. And India ranks 12th in the world for the use of pesticide. So it's much lower than other developed countries, but it's still a lot. Okay. And what is the problem? The problem is that it's used very indiscriminately. And therefore, pesticide residue, which means the remain pesticides, a lot of it remains in the food that we eat and in the soil. Uh, what are the impacts of this uh, pesticide use? So we all are exposed to this pesticide. All of us are exposed to this pesticide. Okay, before I go ahead, I wanna check with the, uh, the organizers, how much time is left? How much time should we take? Um, I think you have till, um... 6.45 or more actually, 6.50 or something. So I think you have about half an hour. Okay. Okay, so what's the impact of all this pesticide use? You, we, you, you know that we're using about 3.5 million tons of pesticide annually. How does it impact us? So we are all exposed to this pesticide through our skin when we touch it. In the food that we eat, we in eat pesticide and if we are around farms we're in or around farms we also inhale pesticide how many of you have uh, how many of you have smelled pesticide how many of you how many of you have been around farms where pesticide is used okay Sahil says my voice is not clear uh, is that the same are uh, others also experiencing this Uh, are others also? Ex no. Okay, fine. Okay. So how many of you have been around farms where pesticides are used? Okay. Anyone wants to say anyone has been around a farm where pesticide is used? You can write on the chat. No? That's okay. Yes, Raya. Okay. Raya, do you have you smelt it? No, not urea. I'm talking about pesticide. Have you smelt? Yeah, Raya, how does it smell? Yeah, okay. Sunil also, Shabnam also. How does it smell? Nice? 
Is it a good smell? Pungent. Chaitanya says yes, yes to it's a good smell or yes to have you been around uh, pesticides? Difficult to breathe, Sunil says. Yeah. So where I stay in Bangalore, my house is actually located around, so on all sides there is, and Preeti also stays there, on all sides there are farms. And we often take walks around, uh, around in the middle of those farms, right? And, and there's a lot of pesticide that's used in those farms. So we know what it smells like. It's not a good smell. Very, very toxic. I love this. So it's very, very toxic. It feels like you want to run away from there. But imagine, so, and, and we don't walk when there's the smell of pesticide, we just want to get away. But imagine the people who have to be in those farms using that pesticide day and night, inhaling that pesticide day and night. Imagine what happens to them. So we are exposed to it, okay? but it has, and it has a lot of impact on us. It has health impacts. For instance, it causes skin problems. It causes gastro intestinal problems, that is it causes problems in our stomach, it causes neurological problems, that means problems in the nervous system. It's very, um, many of the pesticides that we use are carcinogenic, which means they cause cancer. Uh, they also cause respiratory problems, that means breathing problems. They cause reproductive problems, that means problems in child birth. Uh, they have problems with endocrine effects, uh, which means uh, the glands that we uh, gra glands and uh, uh, enzymes that are produced in our body, they cause changes in those. Uh, they can cause immune suppression. They can cause uh, hormonal disruption. They can cause diminished intel intelligence. So next time, if if somebody says you're not intelligent enough, you can blame it on pesticide use. <laughs> somebody says that you're dumb, you can blame it on pesticides. Uh, it can cause reproductive abnormalities. Okay? And of course, like I mentioned, it can cause cancer. But apart from what it can do to humans, it also has a huge impact on biodiversity. Okay? There was a study uh, in Europe, uh, which showed that bird population and, and, the, and the diversity of birds had gone down drastically because of pesticide use. And they, they found that it was specifically because of the use of pesticide that bird population and species of birds had reduced drastically. Okay. And then a lot of uh, pesticides also are produced in factories, right? So a lot of uh, emissions are caused in the production of pesticides as well. Okay. Fossil fuels have to be used in the production and that causes a lot of emissions. In India, uh, another problem of pesticide use has been that because the pesticide remains in the crop when it's uh, and the crop has to be uh, exported out, it's often rejected because there are high levels of pesticides and other countries, developed countries don't accept uh, such high level of pesticide in the crop. Uh, we use a lot of DBT, uh, DDT. Have you, any of you heard the term DDT? You might have heard that. Okay, some of you might have heard it, and it's one of the most uh, commonly used pesticides in India. Uh, and its uncontrolled use has led to a lot of issues. Uh, it also causes river pollution because the pesticide, you, you use pesticide in the farm, but when you add water, it flows into the river and that causes river pollution. Uh, it's also been found in drinking water, right? Because of course you put it in the farm, it's not going to stay there. Uh, it, it, it mixes with our drinking water sources and pollutes our drinking water, and that is the water that we drink. Okay? It has been, it has found to have huge impacts on children, right? It's been found in breast milk. Um, the milk that mothers give to their children, there have been samples of pest milk which have actually found traces of pesticide in them. Okay? And this has been known to impact the development of children. Uh, other things that happen when we, because of agriculture, right? When we are, uh, when we do agriculture and when we harvest crops, particularly when we are engaged in monoculture, what is monoculture? Monoculture is the growing of a single crop. So if you see like farms where there is only one crop and one crop grows throughout the year, 
like you have only sugar cane or you have only soya bean or you have only wheat only ge gehu uh, then what happens is when you harvest that and you leave the land then that land is actually degraded okay? because there are you, that land has lost all its nutrients all its water and all its energy okay? so the life is lost from that land this leaves the land barren and unfit so there's nothing nothing can grow on that land and it can't sustain life anymore um okay we'll talk about food waste also so when we on the subject of food how does food uh, cause climate change one of the biggest reasons is food waste and we were talking about how we are producing a lot of food more than we need but still there are people going hungry why is it happening one of the big reasons is wastage of food okay one third of the food produced globally is wasted every year matlab hum jitna khana ugate hain uska ek tihai hissa barbaad ho jata hai okay what is the value of this food pisi culture oh pisi culture is uh, fish rearing i think <laughs> um mono culture is growing a single crop pisi culture i think is related to fish not sure uh okay so what is the value of the food that we waste it's about 1 trillion dollars how much is 1 trillion dollars it's 1000 billion dollars i can't even imagine how much that is in rupees <laughs> and if i want to write it down i won't even be able to write it down i'll fill the whole page maybe trying to write down how much that is in rupees so but that is the amount of money that is wasted in terms of uh, in the amount in 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 the food that we waste that is the value of the food that is wasted globally every single year uh an interesting statistic uh if we are, if we were to grow the food that is wasted we would need an area larger than china okay and 25% of the world's fresh water supply to grow the food that is wasted it's never eaten okay okay so food wastage is a big issue another issue with the agriculture is water agriculture needs a lot of water and what you see on this graph in front of you is the situation of the world in terms of water stress so as you see the darker spots on the graph those darker spots are places where uh where water is very little okay water uh where the recharge of water is less than the water that we are taking out of the earth okay so we are using more water and less water is going into the ground so those red spots you see here 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 those are places where which are very very water stressed okay okay uh and most of this water is used in agriculture okay how much water do we have in the world okay. we have about uh, 14 million cubic um, kilometers of water but only about 45000 cubic kilometers is fresh water that means only about 0.003% of the world's water is water that we can actually use so we don't have a lot of water and if we're going to waste it um and use more than we draw then pretty soon we will be in serious trouble okay how much water is used to produce the food that you eat in a day i'll answer that it's about uh, it's between 2000 and 5000 liters of water are needed to produce the food that you eat in one day and finally i like to take, talk about the last thing okay what is the uh, impact of agriculture on animals so here's a question what makes us different from animals answers quickly what makes us different from animals they don't have a home okay 
Really? Okay, anyone else? Thinking ability, okay, so you don't, you think they can't think? Animals don't pollute. We have sense and they don't have sense, okay. They can't protest. We can do things that they can't, like what? Humanity, okay. We eat processed food, they don't, but if you I feed a dog a biscuit, it eats it, right? They can consume unfit water in accordance with human. We can analyze. They can't speak. Okay, they can speak in their language, no? Animals never pollute the environment, which humans do. We have a more complex and developed mind. Okay. Okay. What makes dogs and cats? Okay, animals are different. What makes dogs and cats different from hens, chickens, fowls, goats, sheep, cows, buffaloes, bulls, and pigs? Any idea? Why do you think dogs and cats are different from all these other animals? No answers, come on. Dogs and cats can be kept as pets, yeah? Domestic house pets, okay. <laughs> that's the, okay, that's the only difference, we eat them. But in their nature, what is the difference in their nature? What do you think is the difference between dogs and cats and these other animals? They are easy to maintain, really? Dogs and cats need food and others give food to us. Okay. <laughs> okay. They are farm animals as well as dogs and cats are domestic animals. They don't uh, used to rely on humans. They have a different behavior. Okay. Do animals, and more questions for you. Do you think animals not enjoy freedom and like me and you? Do animals not want love and care like me and you? Do animals not feel pain? like me and you. Do you think they feel pain? Do you think they want freedom? Do you think they enjoy love and care? Okay. okay. Which picture do you think looks better? Uh, chicken here on the left or chicken on the right? Left or right? Which one is better? Nobody likes the left, left one. Isn't your tongue salivating at the left one? <laughs> okay, so we'll talk about some of the problems with animal agriculture. The first is confinement. You can see that animals are kept in very, very small cages uh, or tied up by ropes. Would you want to be like that? Tied up or kept in small cages? I wouldn't. So I think, I think that's a problem. Um, then, uh, when we have chicken, right, Ch little chicks in farms are de-beaked. Their, their beaks are broken up like this because why is this done? So that they don't hurt each other. And this is a very painful process. Many of the people don't do it very scientifically. Uh, cows and pigs are also often tail docked which means that their tails are removed and often in very unscientific ways, causing them a lot of pain and infection. Uh, there's a lot of genetic manipulation in animals, particularly in chicken, pigs, cows, so that they can serve uh, our purposes of uh, eating either our, so that they, are, uh, they give us more eggs or they give us more milk or they give us more meat. Uh, this is how we treat animals. Uh, would you like to be transported like this? This is how most of our animals, and particularly in India, this is how we treat them. Okay? Uh, they have to be, they have to undergo forced, forced impregnation, particularly cows uh, undergo forced impregnation. That means they are impreg impregnated forcefully so that they give birth. Uh, they keep giving birth so that they keep producing milk. Okay, they only produce milk when uh, after they give birth, right? You, you drink milk, right? And how does that milk come? That milk comes from cows. And to produce milk, cows need to give birth, like your mother, like humans. Humans, human, humans also produce milk after giving birth. Cows also produce milk after giving birth. But to, in order to produce milk, 
uh, they have to give birth. So we keep impregnating them so that they keep giving birth and producing milk. And this is how we do it. Okay. Uh, male calves don't have any value in India and therefore they are either slaughtered or abandoned. So if you are out on the street and you see cows roaming around, it's probably because they're male and they're not wanted by anyone or because they've been, uh, uh, they've stopped giving milk. So they've been abandoned and out on the road. They're also killed. Uh, many of them, uh, if, you, if you go to a slaughterhouse in India, any place that, uh, that kills animals, they'll be killed in front of others. So there'll be a group of them and one of them will be killed. So imagine you're a set of friends and, and one by one, your friends are being killed in front of you. And this is how it happens in India. It's not supposed to happen. It's against the law, but this is how it happens in India. Uh, how many, and because of these conditions, they are very sick. Um, they live in very unhygienic conditions and they all have very high rates of infection. A lot of animals are used in, in, in the world. Okay. Every day, uh, okay, now we come to the next issue, which is vulnerability of those who are increased, engaged in farming in uh, India and particularly in India, we know about the issue of farmer suicides. And this is because farming in India is a very risky business and particularly commercial farming, wherever commercial farming has been introduced, uh, people have to take loans to buy seeds, to buy fertilizers, to buy pesticide. And then if they, their crop fails or they're not able to sell their crops, uh, they, they're not able to repay their debts. And therefore they have to, uh, many of them uh, take resort to suicide. Uh, this is crop residue burning, which we talked about, which is which causes all the pollution in Delhi, but it's spreading to all parts of India and causes a lot of pollution. Um, okay, so the challenge of agriculture, and we'll wrap up here, four kinds of, if we talk about food, there are four kinds of interrelated issues that we have to deal with. We have to make sure that everybody gets enough nutritious, healthy food. We have to make sure that livelihoods of people engaged in food production are secured. We have to also ensure that uh, we, are, we have enough food without causing cruelty to animals. And we have to think about the environment and we have to think about protecting and restoring ecological health. Okay, So these are four interrelated issues and what can we do about it? So these are some suggestions from my side. Firstly, you should know where your food is coming from. So eat local, promote local, eat organic so that you can uh, you don't have to ingest pesticides and fertilizers so eat organic as far as possible eat things like millets and coarse grains instead of wheat uh, and white rice white polished rice diversify eat wildly growing uh, and local edible foods grow food in your own homes have a garden in your own house have some uh, put some plants grow tomato, grow mirchi, grow things like that, which you can in your own house. Okay. If you can volunteer at a local organic farm, don't use packaged food, buy food. When you go to shop, uh, take your own cloth bag, put in that and bring it home. Don't use packaged food at all. If you're eating animal products, be mindful of their suffering. Think about where it's coming from, what happened to the animal, how it was treated before it, come, it got on your plate. Uh, make friends with animals, all kinds of animals, not just dogs and cats. And also ask your policy makers to take uh, some steps. Okay. Here are some steps that you can ask your parliament. So a lot of you are engaged in parliament, engaged in activism, right? Uh, this is what you can do. You can ask your local governments to make an inventory of, make a list of local organic farms and farmers and support them in selling their products. Stop supporting, tell your government to stop supporting chemical agriculture. Tell your government to provide incentives and support for natural organic farming. Offer minimal, minimum support price and, and procurement uh, price uh, to farmers who are producing organic foods. Make composting mandatory for all institutions because there's a lot of food waste. So where does that food waste go? We at least need to compost it. Okay, so composting should be mandatory for all institutions and for all farmers. Okay, instead of burning their residue, they should compost it or feed it to animals. 
enforce a strict ban on crop residue burning very strictly because you know it causes a lot of pollution. We need to enforce policies. So there are a lot of policies regarding humane treatment of animals, but we need to enforce them. They're not enforced. So tell your government to enforce those policies. Purchase and use only organic foods for food security schemes of the government. Tell your government, it has, have you heard of public distribution system and midday meals and anganwadis and community kitchens like the Amadmi canteen or the Amma canteens? Any of you have heard of any of this? You need to tell your government that if it's providing food to the poor, it should provide food from organic farms and it should provide all types of other, not just wheat and rice, but provide things like millets as well. What are millets? Millets are things like ragi, madhwa, um, bajra, jawar, those kind of things which require less water, less resources to grow are much more sustainable than wheat and rice. That's it. Thank you so much. Any questions or anything else? Anushka, Neha, Sunil, that's it from me. Thank you, Anjur. I'm still absorbing whatever has been said. I think I need some more hours to statement by statement, picture by picture, statistic by statistic, questions by questions, learnings by learnings. There's a lot that has been shared and I think we all here really appreciate and admire the clarity that you have. So thank you for sharing this so openly. And all the kids, I'm sure, uh, we have a feedback form wherein we are asking everyone to write their questions so that we can connect with you if for being mindful of the time that we have. But if you have questions, you can post in, in the chat box. With the time we have. Okay, with that, um, and with that, if you could also share your email ID so they could reach out to you for any other queries, then that would be great too. Okay, so um, now that we've come to the end My of the session, um, we think that that was an, a wonderful session. It was really impactful and we got a really important message that you delivered here. Um, you gave examples, you even gave us um, things that we could probably implement and do in our lives. And I think that is something that all the children present here will take home with them. Um, and now I think we can start we can end with the same question that we asked in the beginning is that now after enjoy sir session can you now imagine the childhood a few years back we had to be the same as that of any other child after 20 years and certainly the answer will be yes because we can and that too if we take action now so um, now we would want to make the session a bit more interactive for any suggestions, questions, um, feedback. So for this, we are going to be sharing a link in the chat for any feedback that you would want to give. Um, and along with that, we would also want to invite the environmental lead, um, environment lead at Pratyek, which is Mr. Sunil Gupta, to share a few words as a vote of thanks. Um, Sunil, sir. Thank you, uh, Neha. I just want to thank, I mean, just I would just say thank you, Anjur, for coming and sharing this time and space with us. And I'm also thankful to each one of the children present here, all the Pratik staff and also Steve for giving us this opportunity. And this has been crafted, you know it, Anjur, that these are the children who have done it. I have very little role to play. Anushka, Neha, Manisha Ram, Manisha Jeevan, Neelam, uh, Puneet, uh, uh, if I'm sorry, I'm missing any name, Jeevan, Kunal, and also my team, uh, Anisha, everyone has been so supportive. So this has been possible because of everyone's efforts. So I want to thank you all. And also special thanks to all the guests, Nisha ma'am, Ravi sir, uh, Rajiv bhaiya, uh, Varun bhaiya, Sharmila ma'am, jo jo bhi aaj aayin, jinho ne suna, bohat hi bohat uh, gratitude sab ke liye. So thank you. Over to you, Anushka and uh, Neha. Uh, Neha and Anushka, can I take a moment, please? Sure. I would also like to thank Erin 
uh, for signing uh, for us right from 5:30 thank you so much erin for your presence every time and making our uh, forums uh, inclusive as steve says it is you and elrina who help us always so thank you so much for being here today uh, right from 5:30 thank you Thank you, Nisha, ma'am. Um, everyone, we're just sharing um, a link to a form in the chat. It would be great if you would fill it up. Um, this is just to keep you informed as to all of the other programs that Pratyek would be carrying out, as well as um, all of your feedbacks and suggestions or questions you would like to pass on to Anjorsa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the interpretations, as uh, Anisha Ji mentioned, for sign language as well as for hindi thank you sayam for that and uh, anjur sir what should i say i think the session was mind blowing it has left a deep impact and we are like right now also processing all the statistics facts figures and correlating the relationship between them so thank you so much for all of that and i think our audience has been so active throughout they they have truly enjoyed and and they are like truly enriched by it and uh, seeing the time i think we can have some interaction with the audience as well for the next 5 to 10 minutes so if anyone has questions please put them in the chat box if you want to unmute please raise your hands we will identify you we'll recognize you and then you can go ahead i think i think more, not just questions if anyone wants to share experiences or add to what i've said from their experience uh, their experience of uh, organic or chemical agriculture or animal farming or any of these things that we've talked about or eating local any of these things or avoiding plastic any of these things please do share absolutely please raise your hands we'll recognize you and then you can uh, speak um in case you don't want to speak you can also put your questions in the chat me and neha will um read them out loud to anjur sir yes as sir said you can share all your experiences if you have adopted any kind of changes in your own lifestyle sustainable choices you can share all of us uh, with all of us so that we also get inspired and learn from each other please raise your hand if you've done in... if you've done any work towards sustainable food even a simple thing like carrying a cloth bag when you went shopping uh, will be a big thing to share and also since it it is a sharing session may I please request all the children and all the people family friends parents teacher So please switch on their video so that it becomes a little more lively. So we get to see you all. Um, Anjur sir, we have a few questions in the chat. Should I read them out? Yes, uh, I I seen them. So uh, one is why can't we rely on naturally available pesticides and fertilizers like poop of certain animals and certain plants can be grown in certain areas in the field that can keep away insects. Uh, we certainly can. and a lot of people are working on this there is a for pesticide for natural pesticide use there's actually a, a well developed method called npm natural pesticide pest management okay uh which is so which is well known on how you can manage pests naturally okay and people are different people are using it across the world and across the country so it can be done it's just that it's not being promoted by our government so we need to push it we need to push it ourselves as consumers as citizens we need to push our governments to promote those practices um another question and i i would like people sunil has come from chatisgarh where he's seen some uh, natural farming practices preeti has come from orissa where she's witnessed natural farming practices uh, preeti is also engaged in a natural farming uh, club at the university so she should talk about it uh there's another question about what we can what are some resources books authors videos one can read i think this is a great question what i can do sunil do we have the list of you can get the list of people who registered and their contacts as well right yeah 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 so and we also can, we, we are we are sharing the feedback form na usme naam email address pucha gaya so please yeah. i request all of you 
now i i'll speak little like uh, pratik pampur i request all of you to please fill the feedback form it is important for us to keep the record also for you to be eligible for the certificate thank you so uh, will i share the a list of resources uh, with all the people who have registered and hopefully all of you have registered but one movie that i would like like to suggest to all of you is a movie called dominion do watch that it's an english movie uh, please do watch the movie on animal agriculture chat box mein spelling likh do na thank you and we have shared anjur's email id anjur ek bar dobara se type kar do email id jisko bhi koi queries hain you can reach out to them also feedback form mein we have written a space aapko koi questions puchne hain aap हम तक भेजो आई कैन डायरेक्ट टू अंजोर बोथ फेस प्रीति डू वॉन्ट टॉक अबाउट दस्टेनेबल फार्म वे यू कम फ्रॉम सिंस वरुण इज आस्किंग अबाउट एक्सपीरियंसिस वेस्ट सस्टेनेबल ऑर्गेनिक फूड्स आर अवेलेबल बिफोर प्रीति इफ यू देयर एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टॉक अबाउट इट बिफोर यू श्योर आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टॉक अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट there are a lot of places across 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 the world but also in india where sustainable farming happens for instance many parts i am just coming from assam right large parts of assam are still practicing sustainable agriculture in fact they have sustainable lives also but what what we are doing as government and even as ngos we are pushing them towards chemical agriculture we are promoting them to use mechan you know to use pesticide to use fertilizer we are giving it to them for free i was at a meeting i was in assam in a place called majuli and i was in a meeting okay where an agriculture officer is proudly telling me that you know what what we've done is we've given farmers um, combined harvesters uh, combined harvesters are the things that farmers around up bihar up punjab haryana use which is why to harvest crop and those are the reasons why people engage in crop burning okay so th that's insane because that means that people in in assam will also now start engaging in crop burning so people a lot of people naturally in jharkhand in chatisgarh in odisha in assam in all these far uh, you know remote areas are doing natural farming and we just need to promote them they just need support so that they continue doing it and the risks are covered that's it and of course a lot of places uh, in where in apu in ba bangalore where i stay our neighbor does uh, organic farming and we take all our food from him uh, so there are a lot of places in odisha where priti is coming from uh, it's a place in raigarh district which uh, where a farmer is doing organic farming and beautifully he has about 1500 varieties of local rice 1500 varieties all of these varieties and all of these things are getting lost because we are focusing on single crops and single varieties of food maybe priti you can share your experience in another another 2 3 minutes and then we will conclude uh, am i audible yes ma'am yes, i'm actually down with the cold so I was away yeah it was really wonderful presentation and i really i mean amazed to see the vibrant present i mean participation of the all the young people so i mean sustainable farming has just i'm just will tell you a bit of what sustainable farming is sustainable farming comes in a it has a three category it's basically two categories one is a natural farming other is organic farming natural farming is something where you don't have to put any external sources like if you go in the forest a lot of things grows on their own if you see all all tribal communities they don't interfere they don't intervene the overall farm whatever it is growing so that a cohabitation happens in organic farming or we what we do we actually uh, external sources we use but lot, all those chemical and pesticides and herbicides are made of uh, organic uh, products so they can actually mix with the soil itself and it doesn't create any genetic mutation or any chemical harm to the your health as well as your overall body organs so i mean the one thing i believe that if you are discussing sustainability and food i just want to share one of my own uh, story with somebody so when i was in delhi uh, and one of my friend when she saw a papaya in the tree and then she say oh papaya yahan ugta hai 
I mean, she never, because she always used to go uh, supermarket and used to buy all those food products from there. So she didn't know that it grows in, in the tree itself. So what is happening in general, the way we are leading the life is we're actually going far away from the food. The food which we are eating every day, we don't know what is it coming from, what are the processes that has been gone through. And then the distance between the food and us is actually creating a lot of what Anjor has talked in a very beautiful manner, in a very detailed manner, that all consequences come. So since all, here most of the people are young people and if this future challenges are going to affect to you as, as well as us also, it's already affecting. I would just request that you guys start exploring your uh, food. What is it coming from? What is it made of? What is the process of it? Try to explore those questions and you will yourself, you will know the answer of it, most of it. And uh, sustainable farming is a very, very wide uh, area where a lot of uh, farmers and a lot of uh, even, they are doing different kind of experiment. This also some people call it, zero waste farming so it has a dip i will i can't i mean two three minutes will not be enough for me to talk about it but definitely when i take my students to this uh, to the farm they understand how this whole uh, food comes to us so that's what we have to understand and uh, later sometime if we get a chance we can i can discuss in detail that what we do in in apu we have a sustainable farm small farm where we take to the students and this time they are doing a second harvest. Uh, they are going to do in 15 days. And we have been trying different kind of experiment when I say natural farming and organic farming. So all sort of a thing. Students also come up with a lot of their knowledge about that, oh, Bina chemical, if you not use chemical, there will be less yield. So they're very adamant about it. No, no, chemical has to be used. And sustainable farming is something, it's not, it's, we are using a term, it was already there. We have been shifted to chemical farming. It is our local native farming. It's just with the time, with the decades after the green revolution and many things happen, we shifted to uh, chemical-based farming. So it's also it's going back to the farming which we were doing decades back. So yeah, I will just say that you guys question your food and try to know the food is coming from there. But it was very good to take team and it was a wonderful and it's a starting and wish you all the luck and all good energy to take it further. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for that insight and encouragement. So here we conclude the program officially. And also I would like to encourage all of you to take part in the Earth Challenge because that is going to be a significant uh, um, level uh, of this process where we all can make this more action-oriented and action-based. So uh, the link is shared in the chat box. Please do participate. And thank you so much for joining in today. See you next month for another Sustainable Saturday. Thank you, everyone. If you don't have any more questions, you can leave. Uh, thank you for coming. Anushka, are you, hello? Yes, sir. Okay. I was just checking if Steve is here. So thank you everyone. I on behalf of Pratek and Nine is Mine want to express my gratitude to the speaker. Uh, I, Steve is here now. So uh, Steve, uh, it is all possible because of the brain and the mastermind way, Steve Rocha. Is a director, and uh, I would request Steve if you could share a few words for us uh, for the session for, for the speakers. So, Steve, if you are here, I, we would love to hear from you, and then we will end. Uh, you'd have to excuse my not turning on the video. Uh, I'm actually still in a COVID bed and in isolation, but uh, I was glad to be here this evening listening to Anjor. It was really very powerful and uh, wonderful participation of everybody present here. Uh, really amazed with uh, the, the, the factual scientific information given to us. 
uh, I felt a bit overwhelmed at one stage saying, what do I do about this? I mean, it's such a lot coming down my way. I was glad that Anjur put a perspective as to what you could do. Uh, and uh, well, while talk about agriculture being the primary source of uh, pollution was itself shocking. Uh, but actually it comes back to how Adivasi and tribal and uh, indigenous communities uh, related to the earth in a very different way. And I think it, it probably drew me back to say, uh, can we <clears throat> enter that spirit of engagement with the environment as not the other, but one of us uh, in this entire uh, dance of life? Uh, and I think that's the invitation really. Uh, I think there are hard choices also to be made. And if each of us can make those choices and say, okay, at least once a week, if not, go uh, always go vegan, go uh, veg, because our earth cannot survive, cannot uh, hold the, the, the lifestyles that's being promoted right now as the only way forward. Uh, so when I saw those wonderful bar charts on how production is increasing, uh, engagement with uh, of humans in an agriculture is decreasing, and finally how hunger is increasing, it was really very, <clears throat> very telling. And uh, knowing that now, uh, I, we, I, I believe I have no choice but to make, a, at least start a commitment myself and walk with my feet, vote with my feet, uh, and say, okay, it's one thing I can do today to change that. However, I liked what uh, Anjur did there and put policy as, as a big looming non-negotiable. Non and I love that. And that's actually what I, I'm inviting our young people who are attending today's program to do. And that's this platform really, that's what this platform is really about. To turn out uh, Greta Thunbergs and Malala to say, yes, your personal story is very important, making choices of how you use your Fridays and how you use uh, your choice to go to school or not go to school as Malala did, but uh, also talk to policymakers that matter. Uh, so I was really enthralled by that. Thanks Preeti also for joining in. Thanks to uh, George's mom and dad for being here as well. Thanks to the singers who came in from Darjeeling uh, and, uh, and lifted up our spirits as well, because music and things of the heart can change the universe. And I think that's what we really need to reclaim here, not just the thoughts, but really uh, connecting with the heart as our First Nation people did so many years ago and still do today. I still remember when Ar Archana Soring addressed uh, the COP26. He says, tell me one new thing you guys are asking us to do that we tribals have not done, are not doing even now. You're just reinventing our own wisdom and selling it as new packaging. So I think we need to really revisit wisdom uh, of, of old and also wisdom of our own cultures. Uh, I, I know Neha Jain, Jain is here anchoring today. And I remember the time she spent with us in COVID times and she kept uh, inviting through her lifestyle, simplicity of eating. Can we eat as much as our body needs not more, can we eat? And I think it does come from the, um, uh, the, the tradition of the Jainist tradition of saying, you know, austerity is also a principle we need to follow. So thank you very much. I'm very hopeful to what's gonna come out from this. And thank you for this enlightening evening. Thanks uh, Sunil for organizing this. Thanks to our anchors and everyone who, and the background team also that put all of this together. Thank you. Next, uh, on the next